Well, hello. We're here at San Juan Artisan Distillers in Vega Alta, Puerto Rico, where they make Tres Clavos rum, kind of rum we discovered a couple weeks ago that sounds like one of those local um, sort of moonshine kind of rums and it comes in all these different flavors and we tasted it and it was delicious and we discovered it was right here. So after spending a day at the beach, we're spending an afternoon drinking rum. So come along, let's see what they're gonna show us today. Vamanos. We're gonna start our tour and hear what looks just like a uh, sort of a nondescript little house, which is actually really literally on the side of the highway here. But uh, this is where the tour starts, sort of their, ooh, their visitor center, already giving us some welcome drinks, <laughs> which is made out of their, uh, their parcha, and their little tasting room here. Here's one of their little signs, that, uh, marketing signs, that shows the rums, the fruit flavored rums that they make. And it also looks like they make a specialty um, name brand rum called uh, Ron Pepon. So, uh, we are a family owned company started in 2011 by Pepe and Jose Alvarez. So, they are a father son duo. And in the 90s and early 2000s, they were dedicated to grass growing for landscaping. But after the 2008-2009 recession, they really wanted to diversify, you switch up with it as a family. So in all of the acreage where they grew all of that grass, uh, being 10 acres here in Vega Alta and approximately 100 in our neighboring municipality of Vega Baja, they started to grow another type of grass, uh, which is sugarcane, just with the sole purpose of making a unique quality rum here in Puerto Rico. Sugarcane is a kind of grass? Yes, it oh, is. I never kind knew of, that. Yeah, kind of like bamboo. Mm. In, that, in that likeness. Mm. And currently we are the only distillery in Puerto Rico that does a rum based off sugarcane juice. So we plant all of our crop, we harvest it, we have our own mill in our distillery, we process all those stocks of sugarcane, we have fermentation and distillation tanks where we produce that rum, we have manufacturing where we hand cut all of the locally sourced fruit from different municipalities across Puerto Rico, and we bottle everything by hand. Mm. And every single bottle that we take to market, be it in supermarkets or bars or restaurants, we do it right from here in our distillery in the Alta. Okay. Wow. So we have our white rum and we have an aged rum. So we'll be checking those out later inside the house. And we also have our secondary rum series and that is Tres Clavos. So that is all locally sourced fruit from different municipalities across Puerto Rico. And currently we have six major flavors. And we also have five experimental flavors uh, that we actually have on the works in our laboratory. Really? So that's gonna be our last stop in the tour. He's gonna check out uh, those new experimental flavors. Wow, mm. right into the laboratory. Yeah. <laughs> so he's gonna see like every aspect of the operation from farm to bottle. Wow, great. So this is the original vision of the company. 100% based off our own crop of sugar cane juice. So we have Rompepon Blanco, which is our signature white rum, and this one specifically last year won an award in New York, New York's 50 Best White Rums competition, and it got a gold medal in that in that division. And we actually just placed the little certificate right over here, very proudly, right next to the bottle. And we also have Rompepon Añe. So this is our aged rum. So this is Blanco, but aged two years in American oak barrels from the state of Tennessee. <laughs> so that is how it acquires that amber look, and also it has, it retains hints of whiskey, notes of vanilla, and that burnt oak taste. And other than these two, we also have an additional aged rum. So this one launched last year in November, and it is called Tres Clavos con Santo. So this is a blend, a mix between a rum from the Dominican Republic, also based off sugarcane juice, and the one that we produce right here. Mm. So it's aged separately in American oak barrels for three years, and then blended in our distillery. Yeah. So this one has notes of dry coconut, and it's a bit more, people when they try this one kind of perceive more of a fruitiness, uh, and opposed to this one that kind of requires more of that whiskey flavor. Mm -hmm. okay. hmm. 
And other than this lineup of dry rums, we also have our signature rum, it's the fruit series. And here we have our passion parcha. So this one is currently our number one bestseller. So one that I made the <laughs> longer drink with. Very refreshing, very perfect for a hot summer day. Uh, we also have the pineapple flavor. We have coco loco, our coconut flavor. And we have rumba mango, mango flavor. And we also have these two very distinctive flavors in our lineup. So first up, we have Billy Kenepa. So ginger, this has ginger, and it has cinnamon, it has anise, and it has cloves. So it's four spices with that 30% alcohol. Okay, so as you can see, all of that sugar cane is just completely around us. It goes all the way in an arc, and it ends in the back of this building to our right. So that building is the bodega. We'll be heading over there. And shortly thereafter, we'll be heading over here to our distillery building. Right. And inside, we have the mill, we got the fermentation and distillation tank, we have manufacturing, and our last stop, the laboratory. All of the sugar cane that we see here is a Puerto Rican variety of it. Hmm. And it was donated to us by the Terrain Authority of Puerto Rico. They retain most of the sugar cane left here in the island and also the University of Puerto Rico. They have experimental agricultural stations across and just the different regions here and they also donated some of those stocks. Ah, wow. So by stocks, I mean, you can see the big one over here. So this stick right here. Uh -huh. So in this stick is where all of that sugarcane juice is stored so we can, you know, extract that and use it for our rum. So they gave us 25 sticks just like this, just immature stock. And by immature, I mean it came that are still not ready to harvest. So like five months or like three months old. And if we cut these sub segments, these little lines that we see here in the stock, each of these segments are its own seed. Yeah. So that is how we were able to just plant it everywhere and grow all of our sectors of sugarcane. And it took a couple of years for it to be fully grown and ready for that harvesting. So we started in 2011, 2012, and we're ready to harvest in 2017. Mm. And you produced that first bottle of rum. But uh, September uh, happened, and <laughs> that is when Maria right. happened. And all of our sugar cane, which is completely mm. laid to waste ah. here in Vega Alta and ah. Vega Baja. So for a very long period of time, we were just scratching our heads, trying to figure out how to continue this operation going with the, you know, without that main source for our rum. So that is how we came in contact and discovered that distillery in the Dominican Republic. Uh -huh. And that is how we were able to continue with that rum production. So currently what we're doing for Tres Clavos specifically is Tres Clavos Don Santo. So that is the mix between that rum from here and the rum from the Dominican Republic. And the clavos, the food infusions are also a blend of that. That rum from over there and the one over here. that we actually lose to evaporation. So that is called the angel's portion. Mm -hmm. And since we are in the tropics, it's humid, it's hot, it's very good for the aging process of rums and alcohol. Because for example, what you can get in four years in colder countries, we can get it here in two. Mm -hmm. But the only downside is that we do lose a high percentage of the liquid inside to evaporation. So during those two or three years where we age our rums, we can lose up to 10% of that liquid on the inside. So as I mentioned previously, these barrels are made from American oak from the state of Tennessee. And we get them from the makers of Jack Daniels whiskey. So over there in that particular state, they can only legally use it once hmm. for their aging purposes. Hmm. So when they're done with that aging, they resell it to other distilleries like us. And we can use it as many times as we want, technically. If they leak or they break, we try to fix them via by wood chips, like the ones that we see right here, or we can seal it with wax. Hmm. But if we're not able to, we actually recycle them, and we use it in our tasting portion of the tour. So where you'll be sitting at is just uh, barrels that we have used previously for rum making. Oh. And 
while we can technically use it as many times as we want, we tend not to because after each use, the use retain less of that whiskey flavor and the notes that this particular barrel provides the alcohol. So we can use it maybe two or three times before we have to just recycle. Mm -hmm. So between this building and our distillery, we have approximately 500 barrels. So this line over here is the machine that we use specifically for harvesting. So that first machine in line is a first generation vehicle from the state of Louisiana. So that is a region in the US that also has a lot of crops of sugarcane. Uh -huh. So we acquired it from there and it has this cutting system here in the middle portion of the machine hmm. and we can angle that so it's lower on the ground so we can cut at those stalks of sugarcane at a faster pace. Wow. And it also has that drill on its side. So that drill is to push away that next sector of sugarcane so it's not as affected by that cutting motion. So we can use this, but this is a very big and bulky machine. And it can be kind of difficult to angle it without affecting or squishing that next sector of growing sugarcane. So for frontal areas, we can use this one, but what we mostly rely on is this old fashioned machete. Mm -hmm. so we cut it all by machete or by this machine and we pick it up with this red claw machine over here. So it opens up, we pick it all up, and mm. we load it up into these red wagons that we have here and at the end of the line. So mm -hmm. we just load all that sugarcane into those wagons, we attach the wagons to vehicles, and we transport it all to our main mill, which is this one right over here. So this mill, we acquired it from Colombia. We were starting out the operation back in 2011, 2012. This machine, it's very modern, but it is still very much a manual process. So we align the wagon over here. We put the red claw machine right next to it, and we just pick that up, the, the sugarcane stocks, and load it up into this loading dock, this green segment. And to the sides of this loading dock, we have some stairs. So up the stairs goes two of our agricultural workers, machete in hand, <laughs> just cutting all of that sugarcane up, removing any excess foliage so we do not want it to go through the mill, and aligning those stalks of sugarcane mm. so it goes through this second area. And here, where that yellow portion is, that is called a defibrillator. So those stalks of sugarcane go through there, and it is kind of like made into a mash, more workable in the machine and that mash is very similar to the one that we saw over there in the field that you know that fiber uh -huh. that is on the mount so all of that mash goes up that conveyor belt and we're going up here so that mash goes up the conveyor belt and it gets dropped down into this uh, blue segment so here that mash goes through these cylinders and that is where with that motion, we remove all of that sugarcane juice. We just squeeze it out. Mm. And that sugarcane juice just drops down here to these stainless steel tanks that we see here. And all of that sugarcane juice just flows through there. And eventually, through this stainless steel tube system, it is transported over here. And these two cylinders are actually filters. So they have a netting system inside and that is to capture any stray or leftover fiber mm. so it doesn't get mixed up in the rum and making. So after we've filled them properly, it is transported here to these two stainless steel storage tanks. Wow. 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 So this is our distillery floor and here we have that tank that just stores all of that freshly squeezed out sugarcane juice, the one that's connected to the mill. And here to the side is a pasteurization tube. So hmm. this tube uses heat to remove the bacteria hmm. from that juice. And here to our side is where that rum making process begins. So this tank and the one right next to it are called fermentation tanks. So this adds water, it adds yeast, nutrients, and that sugarcane juice. And that reaction between the sugar and the, and the yeast converts the sugar into alcohol. Uh, that's so, where fermentation is. Yeah, exactly. So here, these tanks hold up to 1500 of this mix, it's 1500 liters. And so this, just by the, the vastness of these tanks, that could take up to five to six days for it to be, you know, already fermented and properly fermented. 
So during those days, we keep the temperature even with these cooling rings that we see at the edges of the tank. Uh -huh. Just cold water flows through that to keep the temperature ah. stable. And we also go manually up these stairs, open a hatch at the top, and just look at the contents on the inside. So we just want to observe those bubbles, that reaction between the sugar and the yeast. <laughs> that process is done, we are left with kind of like a beer liquid or a sweet wine. And, but it has three things that we do not want in our rums. So first off, it has a lot of water. And all that water brings down the percentage of alcohol. So during fermentation, we can produce like 10% alcohol. So we just want to bring and just remove all of that water out of there. We also want to remove any alcohols that are not good for the human body. So between that reaction, between the sugar and the yeast, acetone can be produced, or certain types of ethanol that are not for consumption. So we want to remove that. And we also want to remove any colorings. Uh, sometimes that milk tends to be a bit brown, uh, so we also want to remove that. So to remove all of that, we do a double destillation process. And that occurs at the end of the text of this line. Oh, I'm sorry, a double what kind of process? Double distillation. Double, double distillation, okay. Exactly. So uh -huh. we distill twice. Uh -huh. So those occur in those red tanks, and we'll just be heading across the okay. floor and taking a couple. So these red tanks are called Chavignac hot stills, and they are named after the region of France where they were made. So these specifically we got at auction from a closing down Hennessy factory in Trinidad and Tobago. So it came with all of these red tanks that we uh. see here and kind of like a rum making kit. Uh, also like a book, uh, all written in French, it's actually in the laboratory, uh, just to help us out with this distillation process. So you do, you do a, a pot distillation and a lot of other people do a... Uh, uh, it's a column, column distillation. See, so we have both actually. Yeah. We have these uh, pot stills, and at the end we have the column pot stills. Oh, okay. So these are oh, called yeah. Chavignac from France, and that is called a Holstein column pot still from Germany. So wow. the same process over here, and you guys see it up here at these back tanks, and all those vapors travel through these nozzle systems. We call this one an onion head because you know, it looks yep. like an onion. It looks pretty. They travel through this frontal tank and it touches a cold surface, so condensation. That vapor gets brought back down to its liquid state. So that is how we can remove all that excess water and do cuts, remove those alcohols that are not good for the human body, and just make it as clear as possible. Wow. Yeah. And each of our distilling instruments has a fountain lid, like this one over here. So this fountain head is for taking samples from that freshly distilled mm. alcohol. So we got two measuring instruments. So we have one that measures the temperature, and we have another one that measures the percentage of alcohol. And what comes out of these is essentially moonshine, or as we call it here in Puerto Rico, pitorro o roncaña. So it's like at 70 to 80 percent alcohol, and the person that gets to taste of this is Jose. So he's the, <laughs> he's the vice president and head of the operations here in the distillery. So he opens up the key over here. He has like a cup to sample everything. He just uses all of his senses. He tastes it, he looks at it, and he smells it. And those samples, just one of those different uh, variations, just goes to our laboratory. Mm. And that is how he is able to determine the quality of the alcohol and if it has a thumbs up. Ah. So these wonderful ladies are our manufacturing team. So they have the arduous task of hand cutting all of the fruit that goes into our bottles. They weigh all of those bottles. And here at the station, that's it. <laughs> so here at the station, they blend the alcohol with water to bring the number down. For our desclavos, we bring it down to 30%. So here we have a novel system right over here uh -huh. and we just fill all of these bottles to the top 750 milliliters and later on they'll be cleaning up the bottles putting up the cork and what they're doing right now is labeling everything so they uh -huh. have an automized labeling machine over there uh -huh. and then at this station they'll be putting the top oh, yeah. stickers and just the plastic just to seal all that product and yes they do that here every day 
Well, we just finished the best rum distillery tour we've, we've ever been on, actually. Yeah, it was by far the most thorough from, yeah. from birth to earth, as they say. We yeah. started in the sugar cane fields and ended up drinking the rum and everything in between from the uh, harvesting with machetes. Yeah, I mean, they, cause they, they, do, they do everything here. You know, they grow their own sugar cane. You know, they, uh, they ferment it, they distill it, they bottle it here. You know, it's everything. We've been to plenty of others where they only do part of the process, you know, at that yeah. facility. It's the but, only place ever where it's all here. Yeah, exactly. So it was uh, it was great. And, and, the tour and really even more impressive because everything was wiped out by Hurricane Maria in 2018. And here they are coming back. They found a way to be creative and get some sugar cane from the Dominican Republic and combine it with theirs. And eventually they'll be self-sufficient again nature willing but it was uh just yeah, it, a great it was experience. great in, in, our, in our tour guide was, was so 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 Monica. knowledgeable knowledgeable so knowledgeable about, about the whole process and and any question we had you know she uh, she knew the answer to so it was it was it was great and uh, we can't wait to uh, you know to buy some of this rum and put it in our own bar yeah so we recommend that you try when you're in puerto rico tres clavos rum which is already available also available for sale yep. in miami and fort lauderdale but nowhere else in the United States at the moment, but in Walmarts and grocery stores all over Puerto Rico. So when you come to visit, you can have some to drink. And then the free shop on their way home. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so until the next time. One, your one, 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 one more thing here, just uh, just a little point here. You know, our tour cost us uh, eighty dollars, and uh, what we're probably not going to show in this uh, in this video was the tasting. Uh, but uh, we tasted uh, eight or nine different types of uh, flavors, uh, varieties of, of rum here. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah, I, because they make ginger spice, sweet piña, passion parcha, uh, kenepa, coco loco, and something they call rumba mango, in addition to their white rum, their aged rum, and this specialty rum that is a mezcal, sort of a, yeah, a no. mezcla of a combination of rum from the Dominican Republic and their own sort mm -hmm, of combined yeah. and then aged. And then they so it's all wonderful choice clavos. So? So until next time, may your suitcase always be messy. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified of other videos, including other rum tours and spirit <laughs> tours. And until that time, hasta luego.